In this video, we'll take a look at the different graphs for the various elasticities of demand, starting with the perfectly inelastic demand curve, which you can see is perfectly vertical, which means that any change in price, whether upwards of an increase or downwards for decrease, the quantity demanded does not change. So if we're looking at the formula, the percent change in quantity demanded will always be zero, and no matter the change in price, when we divide zero by any number, we're always going to get zero. So PED will always equal zero. Now when we take a look at inelastic demand, not perfectly inelastic, we're going to see that this line is also quite steep, but not perfectly straight up. And what that means is when we have a change in price or an increase in price from P star to P1, we'll see a less than proportionate change in quantity demanded which means that if price were to increase by 50%, we would see a less than 50% change in quantity demanded. Now that happens to work going upwards as well as when the price would be coming down. So we say any change in price results in a less than proportionate change in quantity demanded. And the value for inelastic demand is always going to be in between zero and one. So we take the absolute value and we'll notice that value should always fall between 0 and 1. The next graph we're going to take a look at is elastic demand, which is relatively flat in comparison to the previous graphs we've seen. And you'll notice that an increase in price from P star to P1 leads to a more than proportionate or greater than proportionate change in quantity demanded. So this is a case either with a price increase or price reduction for elastic demand. The change in quantity demanded is always going to be greater than the change in price and therefore the value of PED is always going to be greater than 1. We have perfectly elastic demand which is a totally flat and completely horizontal demand curve which ultimately the price does not change at all and all quantities are supplied at a given price. Uh, in this situation PED is equal to infinity. Uh, it's almost impossible to come up with a pure and perfect example of this so for, for now, what I would just tell you to do is memorize that a perfectly elastic demand curve is horizontal with a PED of infinity. And another one I'd like to show you is the graph for unit elasticity, where PED is always going to be equal to 1. That means whatever the change in price is will be equal to the percent change in quantity demanded. So if we have a 10% change in price, then we should see a 10% change in quantity demanded. And this part of the demand curve, you'll see equal percent changes in both price and quantity demanded. Now one other thing to consider is the fact that on a, on a demand curve, you might actually see all three elasticities uh, from elastic to inelastic on one demand curve. And this portion above the midpoint is going to have an elastic elasticity. Then at the midpoint, it is equal to 1. And below the midpoint, it is going to be inelastic. And the example I like to give in class is the iPhone. Let's say the iPhone originally came out for $1,000. Uh, if you drop the price 10% to $900, you would see a significant increase in customers. But if Apple continued to drop the price, you would eventually get to a place where the price might be as low as, uh, this is an exaggeration, a dollar. And at, at that price of a dollar, pretty much everyone that wants the iPhone has it. Dropping the price 10% from a dollar to 90 cents is not going to increase your large customer base by a further 10%. Because not only does everyone who wants the iPhone have it, but you have such a large customer base that adding 10% of that large number is uh, relatively impossible given the already low price of the product. So you should be familiar with uh, this concept as well as the different elasticity graphs and values. And when you're asked to plot them, please pay attention to whether the problem says whether it is inelastic, elastic, or if there are any hints uh, that reference what the shape of the demand curve should be.